When Sherry and John Bauer left Houston in 2008, they brought along their creativity, whimsy, and spirituality. Sherry also packed her gardening skills, honed as a Harris County Master Gardener. Now a Travis County Master Gardener, she and John build vintage vignettes on sloping property overlooking Lake Travis. We had always dreamed of living in this part of Texas, and we saw this property and just fell in love with it. We didn't even look at the inside of the house. Well, we peeked through the windows, but <laughs> we, we were outside the whole time, walking the property, envisioning the gardens, what they were gonna be. We have always loved color, and when we dream and imagine all of this, we just couldn't imagine it without color. I think it just took on our heart form. In the gardens, they just evolved over time. Former owners, Martha and Billy, had installed the infrastructure on the steep lot. They had put the beds that tear down to the river in. They had put the, you know, the driveway oh, in. They did a great so we job. saw yeah. this labor and this work that they had done and appreciated it and said, you know, there's no way in a lifetime we could do what they did. Mm -mm. So then we came in from what they did and then added, you know, the gardens and everything around it. Layers of plants guide the voyage to upper story gardens. Along the way, Sherry and John framed intimate lounges to settle back. They've got an eye for a good find to give someone else's discard a new mission. The piano is an, an old baby grand rescue piano uh, that was in its last life. So we filled it with succulents. We can resurrect it again, give it life, and just and, and do something <laughs> crazy with it. Every journey has an entrance. Narrow paths aren't the only reason to slow down and take it easy. At every turn, something conjures imagination behind its history. We use a lot of poetry in our garden, in prose and sayings and quotes, because you're inspired. You know, you, you're inspired when you come out and you want to you want to have a place to read. And um, so there's all these little vignettes where you can just come out there and sit and dream or write or, you know, just, just get away from everything in the world, you know, when when everything in society fails, there's always the garden. Wildlife will tell you their stories in the secret garden, framed in native cedar. Then we envision the passion vine growing up all over and becoming a house of passion vine encircled with, you know, the fritillary butterflies. And then the passion vine is incense. So when you sit out there, it's very fragrant. And we're big on scent, so we've got night blooming jasmine, the incense passion vine, the sweet almond, and all of this, and the lavender, all of it releases oils that are just, your, your garden is perfumed all day. We'll so, sit out there and have a little dinner, a little wine, and toward the dusk, and then at some point the fireflies will just completely surround it. John rigged up old kettles to gently light it by night. So you can start embracing those little areas, these little pockets, and then you move around your property, and that way you're gonna enjoy all the different spots. She said, I found a door, I want to put it in the garden. I go, okay, <laughs> where do you want it? <laughs> and, then, and then you have to go from there. We call it the magical purple door. The old sailboat was uh, just an old boat that was, you know, in the mud, covered up with mud. And, and we pulled it out of the mud and we wanted to upcycle it into a cool sitting area where people could come out there and sit and have a whole view of the garden and just be at peace. My father was an engineer, so I kind of picked that up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, how are we going to get this 12 foot tall boat to hold itself up? The garden has the gift of bringing people together, no matter who you are, and bringing people together and bridging gaps. So we love to have people in our garden because I say my garden is only as beautiful as the people that walk her paths. Mm -hmm. We love it when people come to the garden because they're inspired. So they want to go home and that junk that they want to get rid of, they want to. <laughs> They want to they want to recycle it. So, we love inspiring others. Thanks to John's pickaxe and amended soil, a hill of fragrant lavender prompts the color scheme. Sherry and John rescue dogs as well. Their dedication to the lost ones says it all. Under winding oaks beyond the driveway, Sherry and John gather friends and family close at a feasting table. The feasting table was made out of old fence pickets. They've always got a crowd. People bring you fairies. And people bring us fairies. They need a home. It's like a rescue <laughs> They're dog. They're like, look what we brought you. We know this they'll have a home here. <laughs> 
I think the fairies were just part of the whole ideal of all the, you know, all the winged things that here, the angels, the fairies, the butterflies, you know, it was just all part of that, that whole enchanted garden that we wanted to create. There's also music in the sound of water, a most special Mother's Day gift from her sons. I love a handmade gift, so they, <laughs> from, they built that. In their wildlife habitat, another pond and waterfall attracts daily visitors. Throughout the garden, they layer plants from tall to small to gather wildlife around them. We do a lot of understory gardening under the trees for the butterflies. And there's dragonflies, there's honeybees, there's ladybugs, there's all kind of little winged flying creatures. They love it. Sherry brought romance into the greenhouse they built to harbor succulents that she propagates for friends. We just wanted it to be another intimate room. You know, I kind of envisioned it, you know, I wanted it to be the kind of place where I could bring a table and chairs and candles and wine and entertain my dear friend out here. You know, I mean, that it, I wanted it to be that special and that intimate. It is practical. It does keep, you know, the plants winterized and it is a workspace. But I, I also, you know, I also like to entertain out there too. And it's not just something that you go out and do all in one day. It is, it is emotional. It is, it is what you're living in your life. And, and then that transforms into your garden. At least it does for me. That transforms into, you know, your heart on a canvas, which is the garden. When I go out there and I start piddling in my garden or deadheading or what, that's therapy for me. You get to go out and create and have fun and say, oh, we've got this, where do we put it now? You know, and then you find an inspirational spot to put it and uh, it, just, it just always turns out. And if that doesn't look good there, then you have another opportunity to move it somewhere else and that <laughs> creates the fun some more and, you know, it just keeps evolving. A lot of the things that we have are in and around the property too. We had you know, gotten from my parents and, and clearing out their estate. And so somebody has some meaning there. Her father built these crosses and we have those displayed on a, on a yeah, wall. Yeah, that cross collection my dad built. I think everyone needs a creative outlet. Whether you're an artist or a writer or, or, or you're singing or, you know, you, you need creativity in your life. You need a way to color your world. Mm. Create your balance so, a little bit, you know? Be a busy, I, hectic day and then you can get out in your garden. Go out on a cool evening, build a fire with oak you've cut, and cuddle around a fire pit with Mexican blankets. Plenty of oak out here, so uh, cut the oak, put it in, and make a really nice fire, and sit around the, with these chairs and huddle up, and we have the Mexican blankets, which are fantastic. Friends that come over, and the, they love to come in the evening. This is all lit up at night, because we have these little grape lights that ding, dangle from the tree, so everything's lit up. And they come out here and then they end up on the deck and everybody's in blankets. I hope to grow old here with the two of us, of course, but with our family. I, I just, I look so forward to making family memories here. I know when he travels and I'm by myself here, I'm like, oh, this is so lonely. You know, you want to share it with someone. Mm -hmm.